Hi everyone, I can tell you right now that your biggest problem is probably the fact that you don't know how to market your products and services to your audience. And some of you watching this may not even have your own product and service, which is which is perfectly fine, it's not an issue. However, if you really want to get to a place where you're more financially comfortable, um, you basically need to make sure that one, you have a congruent product or service that is on offer to your ideal audience, and two, you know how to market those things effectively. Now, in essence, you know, start up a business is focused on two main things, knowing how to grow or even find your audience, like understanding where they hang out. And two, knowing how to provide them things that they want to buy because they want to solve their problems. If you can solve those two things, understanding your audience and knowing how to solve their problems in order for them to purchase stuff then you're at a position where you can actually make money every single month. I'm not feeling guilty for it because you're providing value and you're getting value back. It's a reciprocal sort of process. So the first thing you need to do is understand what it is that you're trying to do. Look at your niche, okay? So your subcategory within a marketplace and understand who you're trying to serve. Now you can check out all these sub-niches. So we all know that um, wealth creation, um, relationships, and the food and health industry are one of the biggest niches, or should I say markets out there globally. It doesn't matter whether you're online or online, those, those, those are one of the biggest. And then you've got other things like uh, business and all this other stuff here. So maybe you want to pick a niche out of those things. Maybe you know your niche already. Maybe your niche chose you. Maybe there's something you're passionate about that really stands out and you know that you can capitalize and make money on money from it. Sorry. Now, one thing I will say is that you don't want to focus on passion projects. Don't say you're an entrepreneur. Don't say, you know, you're a business owner or anything like that. If you don't have a product and service that you can actually sell, it doesn't make sense. The basic definition of a business is commercial activity. In other words, you're exchanging something for goods. It's that simple. So understand what sort of niche you want to get into. I'll give you an example. So we talked about wealth creation. Within wealth creation, we have online business. And within online business, you may have publishing digital courses. Okay, so that's your niche. You help people publish digital courses. Now you need to define what people is. Now in this instance, you may see, you know, uh, entrepreneurs as a perfect fit. But what, what type of entrepreneur? So you may come into that and say, okay, maybe it's personal brands. Maybe personal brands are the sort of brands I'm helping. But personal brands is a big sort of niche. So what about within that niche? Maybe personal brands within the business coaching niche. So you help business coaches who have a personal brand publish digital courses. That's very specific. And you know there are metrics out there or there are places where you can find these people in order to help them. So you understand your your audience, you understand what niche you're in. You really want to niche down, or should I say understand, what sort of problems they're trying to solve. So a perfect example of this may be the fact that they really want to understand how to market their business because they're not getting enough leads and they're not getting enough sales for their business. That may be the biggest issue, okay? Another example may be they just want to understand the journey and process from start to finish in order for them to live the lifestyle that they want. And that lifestyle is a freedom lifestyle, which I like to call it. OK, you, you so you help people create this freedom lifestyle. There may be other sort of scenarios, but the point being made, understand their biggest pains and problems. And the way you do that is through surveys or through reading and understanding materials such as Quora or Facebook groups to see what people are saying each and every single day. So once you go onto these websites or forums or, you know, question portals, then you can better design something that is based on the people. You don't want to design something willy nilly. You want to design something based on the people. Even if you don't do those things, you can even go onto Amazon, check out the contents pages of different books within your niche and then see what common themes pop up. Now, that's a bit trusting because you're assuming that these people did their research, but they're more likely going to than you just thinking of it willy nilly saying, yeah, this is what people need. I know the idea. I've got the answer. No, no, no. It doesn't work like that. It works by you doing your due diligence. Now, these aren't the only ways for you to do it. However, I'm just giving you some ideas. You may have your own ideas yourself. 
You just need to make sure that you're getting it from valid sources so you understand how you can start directing your product because all of this beginning stuff will help you basically decide what you're going to do in the future. Now, in addition to all of this, to really help solidify in your mind, you need to be able to model success. What that means is, is you need to be able to see thought leaders and other, other sort of like industry uh, people who are really taking charge and really basically uh, the top, top people in your field, top 5%, top 10%, top 1%, whatever it is. So you want to check out their websites, you want to check out their Facebook pages and their groups. You want to check out their landing pages. You want to check out their ads. Save all of this information. What I would do is create a table, save all of this information with all their links and basically pick out the themes that you see. What sort of offers do they have? What sort of products do they sell? How do they speak to their audience? What sort of colours do they use? Because what you're going to do is pick up the common themes and understand for you as an individual, as a personal brand, how are you going to shape and, and package yourself? Now, if you're not very sort of like graphic savvy, you can get someone else to do the graphics for you when you do start doing your branding and all that stuff. You can even get copywriters to write out your uh, copy for you. And basically copy is... Um, the sort of text you use when it comes to your advertising and marketing material, or you can understand how these people capture this stuff together. But what I will say to you is that copy is written in such a way where it's speaking to the audience. It's, it's taken into consideration the ideal customer, so their profile, their role in society. So that may be a coach, a trainer, a mother, um, uh, someone who does karate. And it also takes into consideration their biggest pains, okay? So it's very important to make sure that you highlight these things. So for example, you may say something like, how to become a profitable personal brand in 30 days publishing digital courses without spending months or years working out how to sell one that actually sells. I know I said sell or sell again, but you know what I mean. You get the picture, I'm doing this off the cuff, but the point being made is, is that you need to understand how you can speak to your audience. Because when you start designing your online platforms, then, then you're using a process that works really well. Now, the next thing I would do after this is basically set up or think about what your sort of like value ladder is. So I, I didn't come up with this, obviously, you guys are intelligent. The value ladder was, I believe at least, thought of by Russell Brunson. So he, he owns the online software click funnels, which is great for basically building your landing pages and stuff. And the value ladder focuses on the fact that you have an offer, okay? Some sort of free offer that brings people in. I'm sure many of you know this already. And then once you've done that, you then lead them up the value ladder where you may be offering them different things like um, a book for, I don't know, 27 pound or 27 dollars as an example, or a mini course. Um, or then a bigger course from 497 or 997 or uh, a group coaching program or even your your ultimate sort of thing, um, a one-to-one -one coaching service or DIY service, depending on where you're at. Now, not every business will look the same, but you'll have a combination or some sort of um, similar sort of value ladder to what I just described there. So you need to decide what that is for you. And that's why it's important for you to look and model different sort of uh, businesses and thought leaders so you can have an understanding and idea of what it is but if we go back to your ideal customer and your niche and look at their biggest problems you can create a free product whether that's a, a, a sort of pdf download or a video or whatever it is in order to exchange information for that product now what i mean is is that when you get to a website okay and you type in uh, no when you get to a website, let's say the landing page, um, they'll see all this information about how valuable this free product is. And then they will enter in their email address in exchange for this free product or service or whatever it is you're offering. Now, based on what people have said and what I've done myself, video, some sort of visual, okay, where it's moving, whether that's a webinar or video is the best thing you can do, okay? Um, you can definitely sort of like use PDF downloads or reports. You can definitely use MP3s and stuff. You can even, even do free giveaways if you want to. 
However, video is fantastic. It's inexpensive, it's easy to do. You can do it on your smartphone and it's very simple to set up. So if you wanna convert, video or webinar is the best way to go. So once you've done that, you need to be able to eloquently set up some sort of communication system, usually email, in order to build this relationship with your new prospects and eventually at some point show them an offer which they basically can't resist. Now you can only do that through testing. It's, it's never going to work straight away, but you need to test, 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 test until you get to a point where you can understand what really works and what doesn't work. How are you going to promote this stuff? There are so many different ways you can promote. You can do this on YouTube, you can do this using Google Ads, and you can use this using Facebook. Now, all three different platforms use different ways of capturing people because of how people use their, their platforms. So for example, YouTube is um, a search engine essentially, and people basically understand how to do stuff or listen to music or whatever it is. Then you've got Google, they're usually sort of buyers, or they're usually people who wanna understand or find out information. Whereas Facebook is more of a social platform, so it's gonna have more of a software approach. Whatever it is that you're doing, understand that platform and understand how to read the metrics in order for you to actually get the leads that you wanna get. Because the most important thing in business is getting leads and getting sales. There's nothing else that's important. Everything else is distraction. So focus on doing those things. So once you've gone throughout this whole process, going from understanding your, your skill set, your, your niche, your ideal customer, how to package your message, knowing how to basically create your landing pages and then advertising that stuff, you should be able to see results in a way where you can tweak them and get better and better and better in order for you to get the business that you need. And that's how people start their businesses online. Now, it may seem like a lot of work, but it can be done if you're focused and you have a clear process and structure towards actually doing this. So don't forget, once you understand the biggest pains and problems of your ideal customer, there's no reason for you to fail. So with that, I hope this gives you enough motivation, enough information. If you want any sort of further assistance in terms of understanding how you can do this yourself, feel free to message me on Instagram or Facebook Messenger and I'll see what I can do. Take care, God bless and enjoy. Peace.